Welcome to Fight Club 24-7, my name is Johnny Rashman. Right, let's get straight into it. Devin Haney, George Cambosis Jr. goes down Saturday night in Australia. Right, let's talk about this fight because for me, there's only one winner. And that's Devin Haney, right? Devin Haney is the elite fighter. Take away that it's in Australia, he's not got his trainer there, who he's for, blah, blah, blah. And just look at both men's skill sets, right? Devin Haney is the better boxer. He's the elite fighter. Cambosis Jr. is not. I'm going to explain why. First of all, I want to talk about Cambosis' attitude, how he sort of morphed into Floyd Mayweather, Conor McGregor. And for me, it's, it's a bit cringe because we fell in love with Cambosis because he was the underdog. He was the away fighter. He was the sparring partner. You know, he was that guy who you're rooting for. No one expected him to beat Tiafimo, right? And the fact that he did and the underdog prevailed, you sort of got behind him. But since then, I don't understand it because for me, the guy is acting like he's a pay-per-view megastar when in reality, no one knows who he is, right? Outside of Australia, Go and ask people on the street who George Cambosis is, they say who. That's the fucking fact of the situation. It's as simple as that. Because if he was a big enough star, this fight would have been in America, right? The fact that it wasn't tells you everything you need to know. Now, look, I get it. You're an undisputed champion, right? He beat one of the best fighters in the world at the time with Tia Fimo. Obviously, you're going to get confidence. If you can't be confident, if you're an undisputed boxing champion, you're never going to be. But it's just the way he's coming across. And the final straw for me was the rematch clause. I'm thinking, what the fuck is happening in boxing? A guy with a profile like Cambosis demanding rematches? It's like, mate, you're not Canelo. You're not AJ. What are you demanding rematches for? I can't understand how it's allowed. Now, it's not just Cambosis, it's other fighters. But the difference with this rematch clause is it has to be in Australia. How is that allowed, right? Now you're saying to these boxers that they can effectively be the governing bodies. That's what you're saying because they can determine who fights for the belt next. I can't understand and it doesn't register in my head how it's allowed to happen where a fighter who's a champion defends the belts but puts a rematch clause in. What about the mandatory for the other belts? And if it's an undisputed fight like this is, there's several. WBC, IBF, WBO, who were the mandatories for them? Obviously, Devin Haney for the WBC, but IBF, WBA. It doesn't make sense. It shouldn't be allowed to happen. If they want a rematch, take away the fucking bouts. Not just Campos, just anyone, right? It's corrupt. It shouldn't be allowed to happen. You, These fighters are determining... Right, who who fights for the fucking belt? How can that happen? It's like Premier League. It's like football teams picking who they're gonna play every week. Just it's unbelievable, right? And it shouldn't be allowed to happen. And for me, the fact that Devin Haney accepted those terms, my estimation went up. Right, my attitude changed because I did used to think, is he just talking, Haney? I mean, he keeps saying he wants these fights, but Eddie's not delivered them. Is he just talking? But really, the proof's in the pudding. He's taking this opportunity, even though he has to have a rematch clause in the opponent's backyard, and he backs himself that much. So my hat goes off to him, right? But for me, Cambosius, when you see him at the press conferences, what was he saying the other day? He was saying, um, you're an informant and all this. And it's like, mate, you're really trying to be Floyd and Connor, but you're just not that guy. You're not that guy, mate, and I don't see him as that guy, so I don't know why he's forcing it. I think he should have just stayed along the lines of the underdog, you know, the the guy who was supporting, rooting for, the guy who shouldn't be the champion. But for me, I don't know if it's got to his head. Probably not because he's a hard worker and he does deserve everything he's got. Make no mistake about that. But we have to analyse this fight now. Look at Cambosius' record, right? His last three wins have all been split decisions. Right, Mickey Bay, Lee Salby, Tia Fimo. Don't care what anyone says. If you're having split decisions in your last three victories, you've got issues. It means you're struggling with the, with the opponents, right? For me, I don't think he's an elite fighter, right? He's certainly not the best fighter in the division. There's a case to say he's even the fourth or fifth or sixth best fighter in the division. You know, when he won that bout, let's be honest, all of us are thinking he's not going to be champion this time next year. That's what we're thinking. Obviously, he's got the rematch clause now and all that, so he probably will be a year um, if he wins. But we're not looking at this guy thinking you are the best fighter in the division. Now, if he beats Devin Haney, that changed. That will change. And I will eat humble pie. 
right? But I believe Devin Haney will box his head off. He's the better boxer. Take away everything, right? Take away it being in Australia. Take away Devin Haney's dad not being there. Just look at both these guys' attributes. Devin Haney is the all-round fighter, all-round better fighter. Do you know what will win him this fight? The jab, right? He will bust Cambosius up with that jab all night, right? He will absolutely bust him up because Cambosius doesn't have great head movement. He's not got great defense. He's got decent hand speed, right? But he's not got great upper body movement and he's there to be caught with the jab. He just doesn't move his head, right? I can see Devin Haney just keeping the distance and just busting him up with a jab. The difference with Devin Haney is he's very economical and methodical with his punch work, right? With his punch output. He won't throw eight to land two. He will throw four to land four, right? He doesn't miss. He's very, very clever when he when he looks for the openings. He looks for openings, right? He will set things up and he will cause damage. And this notion that he has no power, I just don't understand it. He might not be a one-punch KO knockout machine, right? Or one-punch KO artist. But believe you me, he has enough explosive power to keep you at bay. And I'm telling you now, I think he will hurt Cambosius. I think Cambosius will taste the canvas. And I, I, it wouldn't surprise me if Haney uh, finished him. I just think he's the, the much better boxer. Cambosius likes to get in, right? And what he does when he gets in close range... He just throws shots. He doesn't really think about it. He just lets the hands go. And for me, that's going to be his downfall because Devin Haney's a masterful counterpuncher. So when he's up close and he's got the crowd behind him and he's letting his hands go, for me, Devin Haney's just going to take a step back, right? And just come in with the uppercut or whatever shot he sees at that point. But I'm telling you now, he's going to counter him all night. This is what I believe. I just can't see it happening any other way. Now, look, I might eat a humble pie. I put myself out there with these predictions, right? I, fi I believe, I firmly believe what I say. I don't just make it up willy-nilly. A lot goes into when I do predict things, right? And I just can't see how Cambosis Jr. beats Devin Haney. I can't see it. I think we've all been blinkered by the last win with Tia Fimo, right? Because... We all thought Tia Fimo would win, including myself, put my hands up. I thought he'd knock him out in four or five rounds, right? He didn't. But everything in life has to have context. I always say it. And you have to put context to that fight. It's not me taking anything from Cambosis. But if you look at that Lopez's fight, he was waiting to aid, wasn't he? Right? The fight got cancelled three times. Right? He had injuries. It wasn't the best Tio, right? But if you watch that fight again in the cold light of day, He's giving Cambosius absolute murder. It's life and death, that fight. Right, he hurts him in the 11th round. He doesn't stop popping him with a jab. Every time he caught him, he stung him. Right, he it was a life and death battle. Right, and that was the worst tier you're ever going to get. For me, Haney's not going to make that mistake. He's not just going to come in, stand in front of him, and just try and pot shot and just try and throw hooks he's very economical as i say he's gonna he's a very smart fighter and i just can't believe people writing him off i can't believe i don't understand it i mean am i looking at something else here because i i cannot understand it because for me devin haney is the much better fighter cambosius fair play to the bloke yeah he's done extremely well to get to where he's got to but as i say i'm not looking at this bloke thinking he's the best in the division i'm not thinking he's the second i'm not thinking he's the third i'm not thinking he's the fourth i'm not thinking probably not even the fifth or sixth right that's what i think i think i don't look at him and think he's an elite fighter i think he's done very well to get to where he's got to but that's it for me and i think the party comes to an end on saturday night but it doesn't, does it? Because we have to get the stupid fucking rematch. Now, look, if it's a close fight and it's life and death and it's a 50-50, then I hold my hands up and I'll be happy to see the rematch. But if it's a convincing victory from Haney, who wants to see it again? It shouldn't be allowed. How does a governing body let that happen? Like, I, I, it doesn't register in my head. I can't understand it. It's like, could you imagine in football, right? Champions League final. It's like saying... Right, we're going to play the Champions League final, but we're going to play it again. Right? It, like, it just devalues the sport. So there shouldn't be a rematch in this fight. I can make an exception, and it's not just Cambodians. As I say, it's every fighter. But I can make an exception if you have a proven track record of selling pay-per-views, right? And you are a legitimate pay-per-view star. Cambodians ain't, right? He ain't that guy. So 
I think it's poor form. It shouldn't be allowed to happen. It devalues the sport because you're just letting fighters now dictate who who's who's fighting for the fucking belt. So what's the point of having sanctioning bodies? Doesn't make sense. The sanctioning body the sanctioning body should say if you want a rematch, you don't do it for the belts. It's as simple as that. And that's the way it should work. We're going back to Saturday night. For me, as I say, the jab will win it for Devin Haney. He's uh, he's the more accomplished fighter. And I think he'll prove it. I think, like Shakur and uh, Oscar Valdez the other week, I, it wouldn't surprise me if it was similar to that. I just think he's the all-round better boxer. And I think a lot of people are going to be impressed by Devin Haney. I think a lot of people are writing them off. My attitude, as I said before, completely changed when he accepted this fight. Because Cambosius can talk all he wants. Um, the fact is, Haney's shown up. Showed up and, and accepted the ridiculous demand to have a rematch in this guy's hometown who, who isn't really known across the world. Just ain't a pay-per-view star. So I, just, I don't understand it. I'm not saying Haney is, right? But this guy ain't in a position to start demanding to have fucking rematches. And the fact that he's allowed to get away with it is, is bad for the sport, right? But ultimately, Haney will win the fight. I think uh, people will be shocked. People will be shocked. They really will. And look, if I get it wrong, I get it wrong. I just can't see it. I can't see any way that Haney, that Cambosius will outbox Haney. I can't see it. I think Haney will keep the distance, but I think he'll be aggressive as well. He knows he's not going to get any decisions out there or any favours in Australia. So I think he'll be spiteful. And you know, he's very good at Haney. Going to the body, he's got a fantastic right hand to the body. He'll set it up, go to the body, and then he'll set things up, come up with the left foot, uppercut. Things come off that, uh, and will slow Cambosis down. And as I say, the difference between both men is Haney's more economical with, with his punch output. Cambosis just throws for the sake of throwing, right? Haney is more calculated. And when they're in close as well, Cambosis ain't going to bully him, right? He might be a pure boxer, Haney, but he can fucking fight on the inside. That's the sign of a great fighter, a potential elite fighter, is they can fight on the inside. You look at Andre Ward, Mayweather. They're known for their silky skulls, but on the inside, they were fucking killers, mate. Dirty fighters, Floyd and on Andre Ward on the inside, and Haney as well can hold his own. So I think if you look at everything, what does Cambosius do that's better than Haney? What does he do? Now, look, you can't... look. Boxing, anything can happen. A cut could happen. He might get caught with a shot he doesn't see coming, Haney. I'm not saying that can't ever happen. Boxing, in boxing, it can. But for me, I don't think it'll happen on their Saturday. Right, let me know your thoughts. Do you agree with what I say? Do you think Devin Haney will win? What do you think of Cambosius? Do you like this sort of attitude change? Do you think that's how a champion should behave after becoming a champion? Or do you think he's putting an act on? I think it is an act, but who knows? Let me know your thoughts, like, comment, subscribe.